So this is Don Pierce from the Rugby UK and our subject is the age of the earth, evidence for the young earth. So this is an important subject um, because the assumed age of the earth is put at 4.6 billion years and this thinking of very old ages for the earth influences how the world conceives the Bible and looks at the Bible because we read the Bible and it speaks of apparently a young creation not very long ago and this is in direct conflict with what the world thinks and so it is important to see how reliable is this dating that is used by the world to support their ideas of the uh, evolution and is what they use to criticize the Bible. And also the other effect is upon archaeological dating and the uh, dating that uh, is given by archaeology and gives ages which are way beyond the Bible framework of life coming into being 6,000 years ago. And so it is uh, something which is very critical. How reliable is the dating? And this talk really was triggered by listening to a young brother who recently gave a talk and was saying that archaeology has shown that the conquest of the land, as we've been reading in our first reading in Joshua, just simply didn't take place because archaeology has proven allegedly that the time when the Bible says that the Israelites conquered the land of Canaan, when that took place, archaeology has shown that the cities which they're supposed to have conquered didn't even exist, or if they did exist, they were only insignificant villages. And the other thing is that, you know, archaeology is allegedly uh, supposed to show that Jericho has been occupied continuously for 10,000 years. And so this immediately puts us in conflict with the Bible account. So this reliability of the dating is something which is very, very important to us as a community. Uh, do we trust the findings of man, the interpretations of man, or can we trust the word of God? And we know what the answer is, that the word of God is reliable. And it's interesting how in recent years, uh, thinking, say, of Egyptian chronology, which used to uh, show, say that the Bible was way out in its dating, it is uh, archaeology. Archaeology has now shown that the Egyptian dating is now much closer to the Bible. It's the, not the Bible that's had to move, but uh, man's interpretation of dating. So this is uh, an important subject. So what I just wanted to just uh, briefly look at is the recent history of Earth dates. And uh, until the uh, beginning of the uh, 1800s, the vast majority, especially those who were claimed to be Christian, believed in the, a Bible chronology of about 6,000 years. And on your screen you'll see a, a little bar, uh, and that's my little time scale to represent 6,000 years. And in the early 1800s, uh, John Phillips came up with the idea that the earth was not 6,000 years old, but 96 million years old. Now the line that uh, I've got to draw there on my screen has got to be multiplied by 96 times. So just imagine going out and buying 96 more screens and putting them all alongside. It's going to be 96 screens width uh, to represent that period of time. So it was 1841 and when we get to the end of the 1890s, uh, Lord Kelvin had just pushed that on to 100 million years. Uh, and uh, so that was uh, 100 lines would be needed there. 
But then a, a great change came at the uh, beginning or the end of the 1800s, beginning of the 1900s, when the uh, Marie Curie discovered radioactive decay and the concept that this could be used for dating was um, began to be formulated in the beginning of the 1900s and a young student uh, at the Imperial College began dating his rocks using this newfound technique of radio decay dating and he came up with the uh, answer for the age of his rocks from his dating of 1.6 billion years. So you'd have to buy 16,000 screens to get a line to represent uh, that. And in time, he increased that to uh, 3 billion years. And then in the 1940s, he got up to 4.5 billion years, which is more or less the current thinking. Um, 4.6 billion years is the normal age that is given to the Earth. So in relative terms, one can see the magnitude of uh, length, let me just move that, that uh, Phillips it was 16,000 times longer than the 6,000 years of the Bible, Calvin just a bit more, uh, and Arthur Holmes uh, eventually 750,000 times longer. So a, a completely different picture. You, you can't marry the two. Either one is correct or the other is correct, that you can't reconcile the two because they are so vastly different. So what I want to do in this talk is to set these times in their context because uh, you hear David Attenborough saying about the dating, you know, millions of years ago or billions of years ago, this happened, that happened. And it, it just rolls off the tongue, um, but it's very difficult to just set that in context and I want to do that as the first thing. Then to show the contrast between evolutionary thinking and Bible teaching by looking at what the Bible has to say and then look at a few of the many evidences there are for a young earth. All sorts of evidences from many different fields point to the fact that the earth is young. And then finally, we'll look at the fatal flaws in the current dating processes, which uh, enables us to say, well, these are so unreliable, we, we can't trust them. Therefore, there's no need to be worried about them. If archaeologists say, you know, it was occupied by, Jericho was occupied for 10 million, 10,000 years continuously. Well, what is wrong is not the Bible account, it's the dating, and the dating is stretched to far beyond what it ought to be. So in order to put this in context, uh, those that were at Swanwick last year and listened to my talk remembered that I'd used the analogy of the M1 motorway. And uh, that was something which uh, a lot of those people living in this country could understand uh, using the length of the motorway from where it begins uh, outside London up to where it finishes in Yorkshire and just showing how far along the line, as it were, the different um, stages of evolutionary uh, ideas fitted in. Now, obviously, we've got an international audience to these talks, so that doesn't work. So I I've gone to the use of a 24-hour uh, clock and uh, this clock is uh, one that uh, the minute hands, there are 60 divisions, so the minute hand goes round once an hour, but it goes round 24 times until it reaches the same point again. So this is a clock, we're used to 12 hour clocks, this is a 24 hour clock, just makes it a little bit easier um, to just understand what we're doing. So. What we're proposing is if we put the alleged Big Bang at 13.78 billion years ago uh, at uh, zero, uh, at 0, 0, as it were, midnight, 
then uh, and that's if uh, billions doesn't mean much in long hand that's how many noughts nine digits after the 13 uh, and we make today now uh, there so we're using a scale of one day to cover 13.78 billion years and so you know when does life appear on this kind of scale well before we have life we we need the earth the earth didn't start uh, allegedly with the big bang it, it started a long way afterwards we would get on the clock to four o'clock 1600 hours before we get the earth now the earth wouldn't be a beautiful thing like it is today it will be allegedly on the evolutionary ideas uh, just a blob without anything on it so we have all that empty time from the alleged big bang at uh, midnight uh, we go right through to uh, four o'clock uh, in the afternoon before we even get the earth and then when we think about life on the earth then we start off with very simple life though of course today we know there's no such thing as simple life simple life is extremely complex um, but when darwin in darwin's day when these ideas were being put forward uh, simple life was simple life and but we'll use that terminology simple life so that didn't take place uh, in their concept until uh, half past five 1730 hours so what about um, uh, more advanced life? Well, we have to wait a, a long, long time to what they call the Cambrian explosion, when suddenly there is an explosion of life, and that takes place just merely 55 minutes before midnight. And then we have mainly sea creatures uh, and an amazing variety of them. In fact, all the life forms that we know today are there, but it, it waited until 55 minutes before midnight. Well, what follows the Cambrian explosion are the first land vertebrates, uh, and we're now 40 minutes to midnight. The clock has reached 23.20 before we get the first vertebrates. And then the next big, um, signpost as it were in evolutionary thinking is the age of the dinosaurs uh, and we're now uh, at 23:36, so we're just uh, a few minutes before midnight and then after the dinosaurs uh, of course we have to uh, think of man coming along no before we have man we have the apes now I've got to change the scale because uh, we're now not talking about minutes before midnight, we're talking about seconds before midnight. So I've got to enlarge the scale, I've got to enlarge my blue clock in the bottom corner so it can accommodate seconds. So let's just change this. And so we have the apes, 38 seconds before midnight. So my clock is 23 hours 59 minutes, 22 seconds. So yes, the next big step is man, but before man comes along, uh, evolutionists say, oh, well, that's man's way down the scale. First of all, we have Homo. Um, and so if we think of Homo, he is 12.5 seconds before midnight. So my clock now reads 23 hours, 59 minutes, 48 seconds i can't deal with the half second there and as for man homo sapiens we're talking about 1.3 seconds before midnight and so on my clock you know 2300 hours 59 minutes and 59 seconds before man comes on the scene and then allegedly those that will try and blend theistic evolution uh, as sometime man, uh, Adam and Eve are selected by God uh, and then history unfolds. And so we have this amazing thing that for 
vast period of time, nothing is happening. And so how does this match up with our concept of a God who is all powerful, almighty, who, who speaks and it happens? It, it just doesn't fit with this. Uh, and just dealing with mankind is just a little tiny fraction. Uh, 86, 400 of the time, you know, a little tiny piece. It just doesn't add up. It just doesn't make sense. So let's have a look at the Bible and see what the Bible says. And as we read through the Bible, as we've been doing the readings this week, we've been struck by the genealogies and the time periods and the age of Caleb and uh, all these things that we can work out. It's a history book. It tells us about how God has been dealing with mankind and the work of creation. Uh, and we believe that God has given us these genealogies so that we can use them and we, we can build up a picture of how long ago creation was. Now, what I'm putting before you is not to scale, and you see very rapidly why it is not to scale. This is just merely for convenience. But when we look through Genesis chapter 5, we have the... Um, genealogies and we can add them together and we can arrive at the time of the flood from the birth of Adam of being 1656 years um, from the creation of Adam. And then from the flood to Abraham and especially I picked Abraham when he was 85 years old when Abraham uh, received covenants from God Again, using the genealogies in Genesis chapter 11, one can work out uh, a time period of 377 years to Abraham being 85 years old and receiving the covenant. Now, we know from, we have what we call time bridges. Uh, Exodus uh, 12 and Galatians talked about 430 years from that time to the Exodus. So that takes us to the Exodus, which we know lasted 40 years. Conquest lasted 30 years. And then again, we have another time bridge, which takes us to the time from uh, the ending of the conquest to the time of Samuel uh, and King Saul, uh, 450 years. Um, and then, sorry, I've gone the wrong way. Uh, and then we've got uh, Saul and David and Solomon, in the fourth year of his reign, built the temple. So that's another 84 years we can work out to there. So that gives us 3,067 years from creation to the fourth year of Solomon. So uh, moving along, uh, Solomon, uh, we have a time period when the parables of Ezekiel, 430 years from the building of the tabernacle to its destruction. Uh, the next big time leap is Daniel's 70 weeks. And again, we can use Jeremiah and Ezekiel and, uh, sorry, Ezra and Daniel to give us time periods to work out. That's about 136 years to when the 20th of Artaxerxes, Daniel's 70 weeks kicks in. Uh, and then the 70 weeks, 70 times 7, 490 days, days for years to the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus at the end of that time period. And then uh, we have from the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus. If Jesus was born just prior BC, then we put the crucifixion around about AD 30. And so to today, that gives us 1,990 years. Again, we add those up, uh, add the two sums together, and just gives us over 6,000 years. Um, these are based upon Brother Thomas's Chronicon Hebraicon, which is in the back of Eureka Volume 2 or can be purchased as a separate book. Um, not everybody agrees, there are slight disagreements, but the, 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 any differences are quite small. And so here we have a picture of a creation taking place roughly 6,000 years ago in complete contrast with uh, a creation which began with a big bang 13.9 billion years ago. And when we look at Genesis chapter 1, and we looked at this in previous years, 
that we have that opening that in the beginning, God, what did he create? He created the heaven and the earth. And then we'll come to uh, chapter 2 and verse 1, when we come to the sixth day, the heavens and the earth were finished uh, and all the host of them. So here's a picture that in six days, God not only made the heavens and the earth, but he completed the work. It was finished. But that was the physical construction of the earth. God wanted to add another dimension. And so there was another day added. There was a seventh day, which was a day of rest. And we're told on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made. He rested on the seventh day from all the work which he had made. Now, that word finished in my um, Briggs Driver Brown Gessenius lexicon is a very simple word, kila. It means to complete, to bring to an end, to finish a task or a thing or a work. So it, it began and it ended at the end of the seventh day. So the importance of that is that God began on day one and finished on day six. There was added a seventh day of rest, hence our seven days of creation. Now we know that Adam and Eve were alive on that seventh day, and so we have shown that the rest of the days must also be 24-hour days. Now, what is so interesting, and some of you will have seen this before, that it is one of those mathematical laws, and we know that the laws of maths come from God. Uh, I'm sure there is a name for this, but I have Googled it and not found it, so I know there's some mathematicians there. So if there is a name for uh, this law that says if you take seven discs of the same size, it doesn't matter whether they're coins or dinner plates, and put one in the middle, the other six will fit round. Not only will they fit round, they will all touch each other, and they will all touch the centre one, and as it were, form an outer circle. Now, if there isn't a name for that, well, we'll have to call it the Pierce Mathematical Law, but um, I'm sure that isn't the case. But the interesting thing is this is one of God's wonderful designs. And in creation in six days and having a day of rest, God was saying to man, six days you shall labour. On the seventh day, cease your work, look inward, look to the centre, look to God, and have that as a special day. And so we find this idea of a commencing and a finishing in a cycle of seven occurs with a tabernacle. Moses commenced the tabernacle construction in the fifth month. It was finished on the first day of the first month of the second year, and God's glory filled the tabernacles and to, to show its completion that marked it. And so seven months to finish the tabernacle. When Solomon started his work to uh, construct the temple, it began in the fourth year. He finished it in the eleventh year, hence seven years to build the tabernacle, the temple. And so we see a pattern and we believe that God has this plan of salvation which comprises of 6,000 years plus a thousand year millennial reign of God. And hence 7,000 years to finish God's plan for mortal mankind. So earth initially created in six days plus one, God's longer term plan for mankind, 7,000 years uh, with uh, the last thousand years being the millennium. And then Corinthians tells us that then cometh the end, tell us the conclusion of the act. Mortality will have been swallowed up at the end of the thousand years, the second judgment for those uh, who have lived in the millennium, a resurrection and a judgment. And then at the end of that 7,000th year, all will be immortal. All will take on the nature of God who was the creator, that man was 
called upon every Sabbath to consider the Creator, they then will be like the Creator, immortal. This is a wonderful plan that God has, but it's absolutely destroyed if evolution is correct. It only makes sense that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth uh, and finished the work uh, on the seventh day. So we have creation in seven days, tabernacle in seven months, temple in seven years, uh, mortality in 7,000 years, though for the saints that seventh millennium will be in immortality. So a, a, a wonderful mirror of that first Sabbath of rest at the end of creation and the God-centered kingdom. So what does scripture say? This is entirely consistent with what the Bible has to say. Uh, when the Apostle Paul, writing to the Hebrews, quoting from Psalm 102, says, Thou, Lord, in the beginning has laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of thine hands. But evolutionists will say, uh, no, 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 no. The earth wasn't laid at the beginning. It was nine billion years after the big bang that we get to the earth. And the Bible says otherwise. And um, we can trust the Bible account. And um, we know how that the uh, fourth commandment about keeping the Sabbath God says the reason why you're going to keep the Sabbath is because in six days God made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is and rested on the Sabbath day. So, uh, you know, we, we can't move away from that. We can't adapt that to evolutionary thinking. And we don't need to because evolutionary thinking is based upon false premises. It's the thinking of man. God has given us his record of what he did and we can trust it. And again, the Lord Jesus, he says, have you not read, he that made them at the beginning made them male and female, talking about Adam and Eve and instituted marriage. So again, uh, Adam and Eve were not billions of years after the beginning. They were part of the beginning, all part of that work of the seven, six day work of creation. And they were there for that seventh day of rest. So uh, there are lots of other passages, but uh, no, those are a few of the passages which just show us that the, the Bible is consistent from beginning to end. Of, of uh, The book is a book we can trust. It's God-breathed. Uh, the chronology is reliable. God has given it to us that we might use it uh, to build these chronologies and these bridges. So let's just put up... Um, a brief list of some of the evidences for uh, a young earth. Uh, the first one I put up, and we will deal with this, so I'll, I'll just put it up in passing, is the fact that we find carbon-14 in coal and oil and diamonds. We, we shouldn't, on evolutionary thinking, there shouldn't be anything there. Uh, and also we'll look at this one, and because it was uh, in the Telegraph last Friday, the decline in the Earth's magnetic field is uh, potentially going to cause problems for uh, satellites. Um, so this is a problem. The Earth's magnetic field is declining. So we'll look at that. Saltiness of the sea, again, that's another one we're going to look at. Coastal erosion, we're not going to look at that, but uh, I've been going down to Honstanton for 50-odd um, years. Uh, and in that time, they've had to move the cliff top fencing back at least four times because the coast is eroding. Uh, in 6,000 years, uh, nothing much, but if coastal erosion had been going on for billions of years, uh, then there shouldn't be any uh, England, Wales and Scotland in existence. We should all be uh, ground away and in the sea. So the fact that Coastal erosion, you when know, I've still got land masses, indicates uh, that hasn't been going on for a long time. The moon's recession from the Earth is another interesting, simple little thing that tells us that the moon and the Earth cannot be very long, but we'll, we'll look at that. And the fact that we find 
and more recently, and this has shocked the scientific community, that uh, dinosaur bloods, uh, dinosaur bones have been found to contain uh, tissue and blood, which uh, is still pliable, indicating that it, it can't be uh, long, long ages. But again, we'll briefly look at that. The paucity of there being human remains. If Homo has been on the earth for two million years, then there should be many more bones discovered. The number of skeletons that are used to allegedly show the evolution of man are very few. Um, there aren't many bones and skulls discovered, very few indeed. There should be far, far more if the earth really was that old and man had been on the earth for that length of time. Uh, and the human population, it, it, today's present level, we know how the graph is escalating exponentially. But the Bible tells us that four and a half thousand years ago, there were eight people came off the ark. And if you work out, well, that, that makes sense. The population we have today fits in with the uh, rapid uh, growth of the population, but that makes sense. Now, if, if uh, Homo sapiens, I guess about uh, ordinary Homo, but you know, 20,000 years ago, uh, yeah, should be totally overcrowded, but it's not. It fits with the Bible timescale. And the fact of civilization, it, it, it just goes back so far and then no further. And that indicates again uh, more recent and you know trees. Uh, the oldest trees are about four and a half thousand years old, and you know why aren't there trees which are much much older? So many things you know point to a young Earth. And the fact that uh, the evidence now is that the rock strata of the world was not laid uh, very gradually over long periods of time. That, that doesn't fit what we see and, and bench folded rocks show that, that that folding happened when the thing was very young and tender, which isn't the concept of uh, millions, billions of years, little layers being built up. And again, with more recent events like the Mount, eruption of Mount St. Helens, where uh, with the aftermath of that, uh, we've had rock strata laid down in a very short period of time, in a matter of days, which, if an evolutionist didn't know about it, looked at it, would assign millions of years to. So lots of problems. The fact that the sun is like a nuclear power station and it's using up energy indicates that if it was been losing energy at the rate it is today for billions of years, it would have been so hot that no life could have existed. It would be totally too hot. The fact that we can see comets occasionally in our skies, they burn up. They, they, they don't, can't live longer than 10,000 years is the maximum they could exist without being burnt up. So the fact that we can still see them indicates that they originated uh, more recently, now man has a fictitious place that seeds comets, which he doesn't know where it is and how it happens, in order to explain how we have comets. We, we don't have to resort to such fictions um, if the earth isn't billions of years old. Uh, and agriculture, everything seems to be a fairly recent origin, it doesn't go way, 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 way back. Uh, on the sea for sediments. You know, if for millions, billions of years, rivers have been pushing sediment into the oceans, we should see far more sediments on the ocean floor than we do see today. So I just want to look at about three or four of them. So carbon-14, now I, I do appreciate, I'm putting the cart before the horse because we're going to look at carbon dating and just explain what half-lives are. But let me just very briefly say, some elements are stable, they don't change. Other elements are unstable uh, and they break down. Uh, and these that break down are used to measure time periods and they measure in their half-life. Uh, and that's when a particular element has lost half of its uh, elements and they've changed to the daughters 
uh, that is called half-life, the time for that. And for carbon-14, changing from carbon-14 to nitrogen, uh, it has a half-life of 5,700 years, approximately. Now, uh, when Libby uh, discovered that carbon-14 could be used for dating, because he believed in evolution, uh, he understood that uh, the creation of carbon-14, which is caused by cosmic radiation, uh, changing nitrogen-14 to carbon-14, and then that then changes back again. He, he thought that the rate that carbon-14 was forming and decaying would reach equilibrium after about 50,000 years, I'm believing in evolution, you know, there must be equilibrium. It wasn't so much recently that uh, creationists have had a look at this and found that there isn't equilibrium at all. In fact, uh, the amount of carbon-14 is increasing quite considerably. Um, it, it isn't in balance, which again indicates that there is uh, not uh, long ages to uh, the Earth. But uh, and that's not what we're looking at here. It's the fact that things like coal and uh, oil and diamonds, which are supposed to be billions of years old, and coal is very old, when we come and date it by carbon-14, and by the way, I should have said this, um, after 10 half-lives, the, the amount of carbon-14 is so negligible you can't use it. So after um, you know, 57,000 years, uh, you can't use carbon-14. So uh, nobody really bothered to date coal and oil and diamonds with carbon-14 because there shouldn't be any carbon-14 in it. It's so old, much older than 57,000 years. But uh, when they did come to uh, date it, um, they found that there was substantial carbon-14 in coal and oil and diamonds. In fact, uh, oil dates to only a few thousand years old, and so does coal. Um, and uh, it, it just indicates that these aren't as old as, as is alleged by the um, evolutionists, because there's still carbon in it, and it should have gone out long, long, long ago. And it explains why we find man-made objects in coal. It points much more to the fact that the fossils and the rock strata that we see above the base rock rocks of the world were formed in the time of the flood, in the catastrophe that Genesis 6, 7, 8 tells us of, uh, and animals being overwhelmed because all these fossils are found in sedimentary waterborne rocks which the flood explains, fossils don't normally form. If an animal dies, it just gets eaten, doesn't it? It doesn't turn into a fossil. Fossil needs heat, it needs water, it needs pressure. Uh, all explainable in the flood. So um, the decline in the Earth's magnetic field is actually connected with the previous uh, looking at carbon-14. Um, it has been declining. In fact, this was what the uh, Telegraph said on last Friday. The Earth's magnetic field has weakened by nearly 10% in the past 200 years, scientists say, leaving satellites at increased risk of malfunction. And so the importance of the Earth's magnetic field is that it protects the Earth. It acts like a, a shield so that cosmic radiation hitting the Earth it isn't uh, allowed into the earth. It's a, a kind of sunshade, as it were. It allows some in. Uh, and so if um, you know, scientists have logged the decline in the earth's magnetic field in the past 200 years, so if we extrapolate backwards, um, the earth's magnetic field must have been stronger in the past. Now, if we say the Earth is billions of years old, then it would have been far too strong for any life to exist. But if we say, well, um, you know, 6,000 years, then uh, it will be stronger. 
Now, the important thing is, if it was stronger in the past, there'll be less cosmic radiation. There'll be less, in the case of carbon-14, less carbon-14 being formed. So when people use carbon-14 today, they're relying on the fact that it's uh, declining at the same rate as it is today, and carbon-14 being formed at the same rate as today. Uh, and that wouldn't be the case. If magnetic field has declined, as we can see it is, then that would there wouldn't be as much carbon-14 being formed. So when we take something and date it, it hasn't got so much carbon-14, not because it's very, very old, but because it wasn't receiving as much carbon-14, and therefore its dating is much younger. Uh, and so, you know, this, this puts the cat among the pigeons uh, as far as the reliability of dating is concerned. So saltiness of the sea, as the rivers um, flow down to the sea, they're carrying salts which have run off from the land into the rivers, into the seas. And so the seas are getting saltier. Now it's estimated that if there was no salt in the oceans at the beginning, then we are um, about six million years since the I hope these alerts aren't coming up, they're coming up on my screen. Um, but our, the oceans would be about six million years old. Well, as far as evolution is concerned, that, that's far too short a period. Uh, it's, life is so complex that even if you allow the millions of years, you can't really explain evolution. But that's far too short. Now, because if God created the seas with salt in them. And if in the flood there was this massive erosion of the land, taking salt from the lands, salts from the lands into the sea, then clearly, you know, 60 million years can be shrunk down to the Bible framework of 6,000 years without any problems. The moon's recession from the earth is an interesting one. It, it moves away a very, very small, six inches, 15 centimeters a year which in 6,000 years is only 900 metres, so that's, that's nothing much. But in a million years, that will be 150 kilometres closer to the Earth a million years ago. And a billion years ago, 150,000 kilometres closer. Well, the distance from the Earth to the Moon is only 384,000 kilometres. Now we know that the distance from the Earth to the Moon is very critical for the tides. If the Moon had been moving away from the Earth for millions of years, then we would have had huge tidal waves. Again, Earth couldn't have sustained any uh, life because it would have been flooded every day. So again, the fact that we see the Moon moving away, small, but in 6,000 years doesn't matter, but it indicates that it can't have been happening for millions, billions of years. And again, this other evidence that in fresh dinosaur bones, we, we find, and here's a, through a microscope, what, what is found is elastic. Uh, in the video, you know, gets his tweezers, you can stretch it, it's still stretchy. Yeah. Uh, dinosaurs were supposed to have died out 65 million years ago. And yet here is tissue which is still flexible. It doesn't make sense. There's something wrong. What is wrong is the dating um, that the dinosaurs aren't millions of years old. They were created by God at the beginning, were taken on the ark and died out subsequently from there. So why, why do we want long ages? Well, only to accommodate evolutionary ideas. Um, that's the traditional plan of how 4,600 years looks, uh, fading away in the distance and then life right at the beginning of the ending here of this spiral. If what evolution relies upon is small changes needing long, long ages to make them, 
And we know that uh, random chance mutations doesn't give us increased information which we need in the DNA. Uh, so the whole basis of evolution is fatally flawed as far as that is concerned. But because they are looking for uh, a very complex Earth to be formed in small random chance occurrences, they're forced to look for old ages uh, and try and find evidence for old ages. So they postulate 4.6 billion years for the Earth, um, between 7 and 20 billion years for the universe, 13.7 is the usual figure. Now, we, we don't have to worry about that because the Bible, the Bible says that God created a mature earth. And he also told us that there was a universal flood. Now, those two facts fundamentally flaw any method of evolutionary dating because it, evolutionary dating relies on the fact that we start with nothing and we then arrive at what we are today. Well, God created a mature earth. Adam wasn't a day old baby, he was a day old, but he presumably looked about an 18, 20 year old. Uh, fruit trees, uh, just a few days old, but they were bearing fruit. Uh, birds, only just a few days old, but they were laying eggs. The, the whole appearance of the earth was mature. And God tells us that was so. That we didn't start with nothing, we started with a mature earth. Salt in the sea, uh, and uh, trees with uh, maturity. So God tells us that we don't start with nothing. And the universal flood tells us that things haven't just continued as before. There was a terrible catastrophe. Uh, and also the world was underwater for over a year. And water is a wonderful leaching agent. So if we're trying to measure things in the rocks which have been underwater for over a year, then yes, we are going to get apparent old ages because a lot of what we're looking for has been leached out. So the whole basis of evolutionary thinking, let alone dating, is this long word uniformitarianism, that's their religion, which says that today is the key to the past. And we know if the Bible is true, which we know it is, well, that's an incorrect assumption. Things haven't been the same. Uh, and we've already seen that, you know, magnetic field is declining, moon moving away. And, seas are getting saltier, all sorts of things uh, show that uh, those concepts are wrong. So very briefly, just to bring us to a close, this radiometric dating, what it's all about, well, it's a method of dating geological specimens by determining the rel relative proportions of particular radioactive isotopes present in a sample. So as we said earlier, most elements are stable, so we can't use those for dating. Um, they don't change with time, but there are some which are unstable, radioactive, and uh, decline and lose uh, and, and change with time. Uh, and those are what is used for um, giving a potential time clock for dating rocks. Now, the most of the radioactive dating methods can only be applied to dating igneous rocks, those formed with a, a volcano, which was once molten. So we have the lava flows and the volcanoes, the volcanic ash and the granites, which are formed from the volcanoes that uh, we can use to be dated. Now, this is showing an eruption from Hawaii on March 2017 with its tidal lava flow, which then solidifies and forms rocks and you get layer after layer as the lava flows down. Now, carbon-14, which we've mentioned, is not like that. It's, this is used for dating once living material. So it's used for dating, well, we can use it for coal, uh, bones and cloth and wood and fibres and pollen. So a lot of the archaeological finds, it's the carbon-14 that is used to date it. And carbon-14, uh, nitrogen-14 in the atmosphere is bombarded by cosmic radiation which changes some of those carbon 14s into nitrogen 14s into carbon 14s. Carbon, of course, is absorbed, it's in the air, 
It's, uh, the trees absorb it, the grasses absorb it, the animals eat the grasses, eat the fruits, taking in this carbon-14 all their life. And then when they die, uh, there's no more carbon-14 taken into those bones, into that body, into that cloth or whatever it is when it gets buried. And so we then take it and measure it and see how much carbon-14 is in it today. And uh, I'll just skip that to this. So this is where the half-life comes in. So in carbon-14, uh, at year zero, when uh, the thing dies, uh, we have uh, a level of 100%, as it were, of uh, the carbon-14. But with process of time, that carbon-14 uh, breaks down into nitrogen-14. And after what is called a half-life, we've got half the daughter and half the mother elements, as it were. And then as time goes on, less and less of the mother and more and more of the daughter. And so today when we come and measure, we see how much there is of the daughter element. And then using the chart, knowing what the half-life is, one can say, well, we've got that amount of carbon-14, so that indicates we're so many half-lives, so multiply half-life by the 4,700, 4, that gives us our date. Now, various things have different half-lives, so I'll just put a few on there, but don't get hung up on them. Some of them are extremely short, not used for dating. In fact, the last one is so short that uh, if you blinked, you wouldn't see it. You have to, it's a thousandth of a blink. Uh, it is breaking down. So how reliable are these methods? Are the assumptions made? Are they, um, can they be upheld? Well, the first assumption is that we start off with a blank sheet. Second assumption is that there have been no additions. So there hasn't been any more carbon-14 added or carbon-14 unusually taken away from it, um, so things have not changed over the time period. And then the third assumption is that, well, we know the decay rates, the half-lives based on what we see today, that is, can, we can apply that all the way back. So those are the three main assumptions which are made on which all the dating processes are built upon. Now, Assumption one, that we start off with a blank sheet. In other words, there was no daughter element uh, at the start when we start counting. It's only been formed from then onwards. Now, that's a reasonable supposition, but we can't prove it because we weren't there at the beginning. And if we're looking at stuff uh, going back to creation, well, we know that isn't the case, that we don't start off the sea with no salt in it. It was mature, so it would have salt in it. Uh, trees would have tree rings, presumably. Uh, uh, so, you know, taking the Bible as our basis, uh, that assumption that we start off with a blank sheet uh, can't be sustained. Uh, and then we're told about the then world was obliterated in the flood, so that completely knocks the blank sheet uh, off because uh, who knows what happens in, in all that time of the flood. And of course that then impinges on the second one, uh, that there'll be no additions or unusual losses over time. Well, you know, the Bible tells us with a catastrophic uh, flood, that isn't an assumption which we know to be true. It's uh, to a scientist and a, an evolutionist, it might be a reasonable assumption, but by one hand, we know it's not a true assumption, so that assumption doesn't hold. And then the third assumption that decay rates have always been the same, well, uh, we know how reasonable that might seem. Again, that can't be proved because we can't go back in time, but um, with the catastrophic flood, um, it's not a reasonable assumption. Uh, and also with the decline in the magnetic field, that again indicates to us that it's not uh, a valid assumption that the decay rates are the same now as they were in the past when the magnetic field was different. 
And so we look at things that we do know about. So this is the Mount St. Helens that I talked about earlier, which erupted in 1980. So here we are 40 years on. And what creationists have done is to take rock samples and send them to labs to be tested to see what ages they come up with. And the many samples that were sent were came back with an answer. Well, these rocks are between 350,000 years to 2.8 million years. Uh, and yet we know that, you know, they were only formed 40 years ago. So that indicates to us that there is a big problem with the dating techniques. Uh, I'm not going to pretend, pretend to be able to pronounce the name of this mountain in New Zealand, uh, but between 1945 and uh, 75, uh, two big eruptions, and again, the lava flow from those, so we know they were between 55 and 75 years old. They've been dated again by different uh, labs using different techniques. Um, 133 million years, uh, 197 million years, or 3.9 billion years. So again, large discrepancies, but hey, we know that they're only 55 to 75 years old. So it tells us there's a fundamental flaw in the dating processes. And if we can't date rocks that we do know the age of, why should we trust so-called scientists to give us ages of rocks of an unknown age? So brothers and sisters, uh, I've I've lost track of time because of all this, but I think we've reached the end of our time. So the word of God is something that is true from the beginning. We can trust it. We don't have to worry about man's ideas. When they say, ah, oh, uh, archaeologists have shown through dating that the Bible can't possibly be true, we have to say to them, well, is the basis for dating reliable? And we've seen that it's not reliable. Uh, and we've seen that there's lots of evidence to show the earth is young. So trust the Bible. There are lots of uh, resources that are available. And if you go on to the Christophian Video Org site, you want the shorter link there. There's a whole section devoted to mainly theistic evolution, but of course it covers uh, all these things. And there's a lot of resources there, very valuable resources which you can access and download. Uh, there are also many good DVDs. Um, I've got them here, but I don't know whether I can show them to you on the camera. Um, but uh, let's just try. Uh, I don't know whether that appears because I've disappeared off the camera, so I don't even uh, know. But uh, I'll read it out. But Evolution Achilles Heel um, is an incredible um, DVD written by 15 PhD scholars. Uh, and there is a book, Evolution Achilles Heel, uh, a book which, if you can see it, which you can't tell. Uh, again, absolutely a wonderful book. Uh, uh, Genesis is history. There are now three, four volumes of that. Absolutely amazing evidence uh, showing that the Bible can be trusted and many books, but um, they're on my uh, Milestones website. But you can go Google Answers in Genesis Creation Ministries uh, and they all come up with uh, all sorts of sites which are run by people, well-qualified PhD people, who in their research have shown that we can trust the Bible, that it all fits with the evidence. It's just man's interpretation of the evidence which is wrong because they have this mindset that must be old, must be billions of years, if evolution is true. We don't have that mindset. We have the mindset of the word of God. We don't need millions of years. And the evidence is there for recent happenings, recent uh, occurrences of these. Mm -hmm.